Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for tuning in today. I want to remind people to do that automatic download. But then again, Kelly, I don't know if I trust it because my podcast I had on my phone was set to automatic download uh, mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm thirsty for them downloads. And so I'll download it myself. But I looked <laughs> yesterday and none of them had downloaded. If you just <sighs> click the play button. Yeah, uh -huh. if you just click the play button, that's... That doesn't count as a download. Why Rude. do you have to download it? I, I, I don't, don't understand. Know. They don't. Want so if you everyone money. could just, I know, God, I'm tired Ugh. of the man holding me down. Um, Seriously. <laughs> so if you could just, everyone, do me a favor and check your downloads and see, are they actually downloading or are you just pushing play? And why do they make it so hard to figure out? Yeah, because there yeah. is a difference during podcast when podcasting the, there's a difference between people who just click on play which is what i've always done mm -hmm. and listen mm -hmm. and the people that sense. click download and everything in podcasting is based on download numbers it's not so listener stupid. numbers i have people so anyway, ask me all the damn time about that and i'm like you have to put it on automatic download which is so silly if you just play know, it that should count me is Mine was on automatic download and it didn't and download. It didn't work. None Bad. of them. And I thought, yes. oh, but it was, a, it was a nice little, it was a nice little jump. Cause I was like, download, 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 download 164 <laughs> times. Uh, thank you so much for listening. It's of course, October, my favorite month out of the year. Kelly, is this your favorite month out oh, of the year? Hell yeah. It's our birthday month, right? Is your birthday this month? No, no, mine's February, but be. happy birthday. Oh, Kelly, who just had you. a big birthday. Oh God. Yeah, I did. It was, it was the big no, be five. Excited. 50 is the new 30. I'm still alive. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, is it? You okay, know what? Good. We'll you know, go with that. Here's what upsets me about getting older is when you go to the doctor, mm. I remember going to the doctor at like 18 and he was like, you know, mm. uh, can you touch your toes? How you feeling? Uh, you eating a lot of veggies? And then that was it. I walked in and out. Now I go and they're like, oh yeah, you're going to need this test, this test, this test. And odds are you're going to have all of these things. And that's just yeah. like this weird thing that happens at a certain age in life. It's freaking ridiculous and expensive, not yeah. to mention, and ridiculous again, and I'm wrinkly. Expensive how does Gwen again. Yeah, expensive. And how does Gwen Stefani look so good? She, like, she has the exact same birthday as me, although she's like three years older. But I guess money. Well, but Gwen Stefani has like, yeah, that's not how she looks in real life. I don't that's know. I look at her life. like videos and I'm like, God damn, she looks 18. She looks Is it like perfect, makeup but... on talks? She's gorgeous. Not fair. Yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's okay to transition and be awkward because I am editing. I'm just editing it out. So if we need to gather right, our thoughts, because sometimes I completely will go into blank mind mode and I'm like, yeah. Um <laughs> So for okay. Murder Monday this week, Kelly, I mm -hmm. yet again do not know the premise. I want to encourage people to go to the YouTube channel because uh, you will be able to see this episode visually. And as Kelly's talking, I like to put up actual pictures of the people and the victims and the crime scenes. And it gets pretty down and dirty. And so that's available to you as well. And then uh, be sure to leave a comment if there's a case that you want to hear. Right, Kelly? Oh, yeah. Yes. I always love love to hear what people want to hear because it's fun to check them out. There's so many. There's never enough <laughs> time which to get is through kind, Which is really depressing, <laughs> it's actually. horrible. And most in America, which is, yeah, pretty rough. Marco. Yeah. It's rough, especially yeah. in Florida. Uh, oh. There's a lot of cases that come out of Florida. Does today's case come out of Florida? <laughs> it does. Stop. Does it really? <laughs> Stop it. No, it really does. I was going to say, oh, surprise, Florida. Okay, Kelly, for yeah. murder yep. Monday, let's just begin with uh, today's murder. <sighs> All right. Okay. Well, I do have to give a warning. I mean, this is October. We're doing the scariest stories we can find, right? So right. this has a very shocking content and gore and and rape even. So 
horrid oh, things. Oh, no. Trigger alert. Trigger alert. So if any of that bothers you, choose a different one. I mean, of course, it's going to bother you. Or fast forward through that part. Or yeah, download do it. You part. don't even have to listen. We won't be mad right. at you if you get to this point and turn it off. Just make sure you click that download. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, definitely can forward through some parts. So <clears throat> what is your favorite scary movie, Sadie? Do you have a favorite? Um, I have so many favorites. So many favorites. I would have mm -hmm. to say one that I do go back to every year. It's called, and I think it's on Netflix, as above, so below. <gasps> With the like zombies right. in the mine. Oh, speaking of mines. No, yeah. they're not oh. a mine. They go to, it's, it's underground not. Paris. It's underground oh. Paris. Oh my God, you oh, have to watch I must it. Be it's of one of my favorites. One. Okay, okay. There was a different one that's like uh, zombies kind of in a mine. It's creepy as F. Oh, I'll check it out. Oh, wait, wait. That's above, so below. Yeah, you have to you have to watch this, you, oh. and then I want to get like a report on what you think. It's okay, it's so about this is in like the catacombs, like, the catacombs oh, I think under I did Paris. See that one, yes, and they kind of get oh. lost. It's like a maze. Well, it's haunted, yes. and there's freaky people every turn. Or okay, every turn. And another thing that adds to the freak factor of this movie mm -hmm. is the fact that they're kind of spurlunking. Which, yeah. if you don't mm -hmm. know what that is, it's like mm -hmm. you squeeze and contort to nope. get through like tiny areas, and nope. that I'm like, ooh, that mm -hmm. alone. But then mm -hmm. you imagine a ghost chasing mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. and my ass would get Thrills. stuck. I got some badonka donk. <laughs> That would not work for me. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> that's one, or maybe not, because then it maybe the spirit couldn't pull you either way. So it was like, True. oh my god, forget this girl. I'm moving on. <laughs> she has a big. You ass have the I'm advantage, out. Kelly. <laughs> okay, okay, good. I, I'll keep eating all my favorite things. Well, this this save horror life. Yeah, I mean, it could save a life. Get more cake. Mm. One of my all-time favorites is Scream. I mean, everybody loves Scream. There's something you remember about Scream. And I love Which the that's humor. where that line. And that's Which where that one? line is from. What's your favorite scary movie? It is. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That's and your favorite scary movie? No, it's not my favorite. My favorite is The Babadook. Have you seen that? Okay. Can I say Baba I've Duke. never been able to get through that. <gasps> what? Seriously? And I don't know why. I, I love scary movies. It's just the kid. And it's I know. so eerie that I couldn't get through it. And it, it's not you know, gory. It's, it's not, not. It's it's more of a thriller type. It's just type, psychologically. It is messed just up. But trip. I can't. I'm I think afraid. the biggest for me is the artwork. I love the artwork in it, which is so because, you know, I'm an artist. So, hey. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, that would make sense. No, it makes sense. I love it. But no, Scream is one of my favorites. I mean, everybody loves that because it's an easy one. It's kind of funny, you know? So yeah. I, did you know it was inspired by a true story? No. no? <laughs> the movie Scream? Well, but then again, in America, that could be uh -huh. any number of it could be anybody. horrific mm -hmm. situations. But you're saying the actual movie Scream is based on mm -hmm. an actual murder. Okay, so yeah, in this story, person. I'm ex I'm excited to hear how the movie is in line with the actual event it was based yes. on. Yes, yes, and we kind of go through that, like how does this fit in there? So yeah, so oh, yep, Florida, <laughs> going to Florida. So this Good was the God, early nineties. Florida, I know, freaking Florida's a giver when it comes to murder. So there's this screenwriter that went to Florida. His name is Kevin Williamson. And he was house sitting for a friend and he was watching a news story that was developing on the news about some really gruesome murders taking place right in the town he's staying in, Gainesville. Mm -hmm. So the story was so shocking and surprising for the area that he became scared that he could actually be a target for this killer's like random murder campaign that he was doing. And, yeah, I oh. think as anybody would, you know. Mm. So this guy is sitting there house sitting. Remember how Sydney was that her name? I think so. Was Sydney house... Prescott. Yeah, yeah. She was alone in her house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this screenwriter, he looks over. He notices there's a nice breeze coming in from the open window near him. You know, while he's hearing mm -hmm. about this story, so he starts getting really freaked out. He gets a butcher knife and 
he goes around and works at shutting down every entry into the house. <laughs> and he's like, which actually happens in the movie. Uh huh. Yeah. So he calls his friend and he says he thinks somebody is in the house. He's really freaked, freaked out. And he's checking every nook and cranny just to be sure there wasn't. So once he makes the rounds through the house and makes sure that, in fact, there was not anyone in the house, unlike Sydney Prescott had. Although she, it was outside her house, wasn't it? Anyway, he sits down and begins writing the screenplay for Scream. So oh. he was so inspired by this fear he was having. He's like, oh, instead of like going to take a bath or, or do something calming, I'm going to write about it, <laughs> which is amazing for right. us. So, which ended up making him millions upon millions. So, millions. It was a great maybe idea. Maybe next for him. time I freak out about something, I should sit down and start writing, <laughs> you know, rather I, than. I think it's a good idea. You know, rather going than going to bed. Yeah. Worrying. Reading a book. Yes. So, here's the story of the real killings and how certain parts of the story they line up with some bits of Scream as well. So, it all takes place in Gainesville, Florida. Just a month after Gainesville had been awarded with the title as the best town in America to live in. <laughs> Holy crap. That's a thing. Yeah. And they won. They had oh, won. Geez. Okay. Now I'm going to just cut in really quick, Kelly, okay. and I'll edit this out, but cut we in. don't have to do 30 minutes. We can do an okay. hour. I just like to okay. give people an option. Like, do you want to get in and out or do you want, or <laughs> do you want to do, you know, yeah, so I don't like, want you to rush. Slow down. You don't. Okay. No, I you're know. no, you're doing a great job, but I, I'm like, oh, she probably feels like she has to hurry. Okay, oh, thank ahead. you. I appreciate that. Okay. So in the early morning hours of August 24th of 1990, someone broke into an apartment shared by University of Florida students, Sonia Larson and Christina Powell. Both girls are very young. They're just 17 year olds old each. There's some of those girls that went to college at 17. Yeah. Smart pants. So Christina was asleep downstairs on the couch, standing mm -hmm. over her for a moment and watching her sleep. The intruder decided to leave her there for now. It's like, I'm just going to watch her. She looks so peaceful. So he goes Ooh. upstairs. I know he goes upstairs and he finds Sonia in her bed, also asleep. He attacked Sonia, quickly taping her mouth to stifle her screams. Oh, Ugh. no. He then stabs her to death with a K-bar knife, which is a combat knife originally used by Marines in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Yeah. Like, and again, like I Rambo. will. Yeah, I, I will yeah. put pictures up so you will be able to see exactly what we're talking about. And Yeah. Okay. So yeah. In, you in see some of those nice knives and they just I mean, all knives oh. would hurt. Totally, but I mean, absolutely. you see some with the ridges oh. and you think, oh, mm -hmm. no, that would hurt. Oh, they just freak me out. Yeah, yeah and it so freaks in, me in, out. Yeah. In Scream, they used a Buck 120 knife, um, which is similar to this one. But the Buck 120 is more used for hunting, which is also fucking freaky. Blah, creepy. Yeah. I don't want to die by a Buck 100. <clears throat> no. <laughs> That's, that sounds like a very fierce deer that's been out there running yeah. really quickly yeah stabbing people it does uh but he didn't just stab her with the k-bar knife he oh, he violated and mutilated her body that's all i'm gonna say about no. that part of it and then yeah you don't have to get to it no we don't want those details he then posed her nude for the shock factor oh so ghost face and scream also like to pose his victims like Drew Barrymore was posed for her parents oh. to find in a shocking way. That was uh, that was oh. that was earth shattering. I, was I will never forget time. when Scream One came out. I was in high school and I went and mm. I was like, "Holy shit! They killed Drew Barrymore. She was I on know. ET. Yeah. Oh you my god! She was going to be the star of it, and for the her to like star of it, and then right they out took the her out." Ooh, it was it insane. Was big. Okay. It was big. So, so this killer like, posed the the, the victim, so just yeah, like yep. in the movie Scream. Yep. <sighs> but he's not finished. So remember the other girls downstairs. Christina's down, downstairs, still sound asleep. She didn't hear anything. Sound asleep on mm. the couch. So he grabs her quick, tapes her mouth shut immediately. 
binds her wrists behind her back and cuts her clothes off, which is also freaking terrifying. Yeah, it is. <sighs> he rapes her, then puts her face down on the floor where he stabbed her five times in the back. Oof. And then he puts her in a provocative in the pose. Back. The in the back. Oh. At least she didn't see that part coming, but still, it's like, oh, you're so violated. So he yeah. then puts her in a provocative pose and he feels like he's still not done. So he returns. But to I, I will body. say, I mm -hmm. well, not sorry to interrupt, but no, I will say the movie scream. They don't do naked provocative. It was just no, thank God. Just messed up posing, you know? Yeah. 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 It was just. OK, gross. go ahead. Yeah. But this one is I mean, this is a real guy. So, of course, he's disgusting. So he's not done. He goes back up to Sonia's body. He decides, hey, I've got some time. Nobody's discovered me yet. So he violates her again, dead. <gasps> Nick, so Gross. he's a necrophiliac. Yeah. He's nasty. This guy's nasty. But then also he not stop. also not on the screen movie. No, also not on this. Thank God. He yeah. then removes both girls' nipples to keep as trophies. And takes a shower at their place. Ah, Oof. nipples. No, ow. ow. That's like Shh, in those. So many things. I hurt. know. It's like people taking ears and shit, but he takes nipples. When I was younger, I went in to get my nipples pierced and I got scared. Oh, no way. <laughs> I left. <laughs> you didn't do it. <laughs> you know what? I, I kind of regret you. it because I think at the age of 18, they would have looked awesome but oh for sure you now i mean movies. now i would look down and they'd be like a cow's udders with the, <laughs> the ring and it wouldn't work now but Murder. back then i'm like damn 19 year old pussy sadie you should have done but, it but go ahead but think when you had your kids would you be like squirting milk out the sides too does that i don't need i don't holes? even know or ooh, i um, wonder how people pump too Ooh, you got to take it out hmm. Mm, so many nipple yeah. questions, but that's not why we're here so today. Many nipple <laughs> no, we're talking about murder. So silly. during this time, we're <laughs> silly nipples. A young reporter worked in this area. So in the area of Gainesville. And you remember in Scream, there's the reporters. So that's kind of a big part of Scream. Oh, yeah. So this Courtney is a male Cox. reporter. Yeah. Okay. And this one, okay. He, he's a he's a male. He's he's a motivated journalist wanting to get the biggest scoops first, just like Courtney Cox was in her okay. character. This reporter would Gail Weathers. I, Gay oh, Kelly, I'm a little worried that I remember every character's <laughs> name in us in the Scream movie. Uh, Gail Scream, Weathers. That's amazing. Look at you. It's like you. It's like you prepared. I, it, wow. Because I didn't even remember. <laughs> yeah. Stupid so Gail knowledge. Weathers, but the male version, he, it's good trivia. He's driving around. He's listening to the police scanner to try to be the first one on any juicy story scene. He's that guy. Sure. So Ugh. just like her in her van, it just reminds me of them so much. So on Sunday, yeah. August 26th, this reporter's doing just that. He's driving around. He hears a police transmission asking for backup, then another, then another. And more. So he's he's like, oh, there's something big. I got to get over there. He hightails it to this location of the apartment shared by these two women. Girls, girls, they were 17. So he Awful. was the first reporter to arrive. And he's making his way up to the apartment when he comes across a deputy he knows well. And remember, that's uh, Courtney Cox's ex-husband in the movie. The <gasps> oh, Dewey. Deputy. Dewey, look just, at you. Just... just I know. Just I'll give you all the names of the characters. All Don't right. judge me. Perfect. It was no, an impressionable time in my life. So, yeah, it was Dewey played by David Arquette. Yes. So good. So he comes across this Dewey character. He knows him well. And the Dewey character would always give him scoops and told him, you know what? Do not go in. You absolutely cannot go into this crime scene. So while talking it'll to just this scar you for fucking life. Yeah. Horrible. So it wasn't about like, you're just not allowed to go. And it was like, please, you're not going to like yeah. what you see. It's going to yeah. mess you up. Just okay. don't even go in. So while they're talking, this reporter sees other cops running out of the apartment puking. So 
Ooh. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. He knew these cops and he had seen he knew they'd seen a lot and could handle just about anything. But seeing that reaction, he's like, this must be beyond horrific. I mean, whoo, these guys can't handle whatever's happened in there. So while collecting evidence at the apartment, the police get a call that another body had been discovered in an apartment less than two miles away from these young ladies' apartment. And this oh, was, no. yeah, this was the body of 18-year-old Christina Hoyt, where she had been found. So, or Krista, excuse me, Krista Hoyt. So Krista had worked okay. as a clerk on night shift at the sheriff's office of all places. She uncharacteristically failed to show up to work. So when her coworkers tried calling repeatedly, there was no answer. Officers are sent to her apartment for a well check. And this crime scene might have been even more brutal than the first, if you can imagine. So Stop. officers weren't prepared for the decapitated posed body of Krista. And they came running out puking when they first saw her. Again, those poor officers. Again. I mean, and that I poor mean, girl mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and these are different officers. There's the other officers are still working the first case when they they're get still this puking call about over this at one. house one. Yeah. And then they at have house, to head over oh. and those people are puking. That is messed up. Bad. So the killer had entered the apartment by jimmying a sliding glass door. <laughs> which makes me think of mm. Sidney Prescott's. He had jimmied it with a flathead screwdriver of all things. If a, a door can be jimmied with that, guys, get one of those freaking wood pieces or whatever to jam into oh, your yeah. sliding glass door. To jam her because it awesome. is harder to get open. So they don't want to waste the time. And so they Good. move on. So damn it, people put that bar down. Get, get the bar, get the bar. Cause this guy got in there and when he entered, Christina wasn't, or Krista wasn't actually home. So he decided to just stay and wait. Because oh, he wasn't there to like nightmare. steal shit. Yeah. He wanted to murder people. He so had a at, job. Oh, so gross. So at around 11 a.m., so this is midday, Krista had entered her apartment and she was attacked from behind, caught in a chokehold by the intruder. Mm. So he grabbed his roll of duct tape and covered her mouth and bound her wrists behind her back. Oh, he then led her to her bedroom, cut her clothes off like he had the other gal, made her mm -hmm. lay face down on the bed, and then stabbed her several times, yeah. one of which severed her aorta. So it gets oh. sick. This guy is oh. sick. He he flips her over, completely slices her open from abdomen to breastbone. I mean, this is so much like the movie where it was so gory. Uh, when police Yeah, the movie was, w was watching shocking. the movie, you're like, this is so ri ridiculously yeah. bloody. But you're saying this that guy it really, really was, was like that. Okay. So, yeah, he when police arrived, they had found Krista sitting up without a head. And the head, oh, and this was, is this is all in one night, Kelly. This is all uh, in yeah. one night. Yeah, yeah. Okay, basically. Okay. Yeah, wow. Because, yeah. So the head was displayed on a bookshelf facing the body, like it was looking at her. Mm. Creepy. Can you imagine? You're going into that room and you look around, and the bookshelf there's a freaking head. <sighs> anyway, okay, so. Hearing about the murders oh. through this local journalist, the town was sent into a panic, as you can imagine, much like the town in Scream. Yeah. Instead of a high school, though, the real killings were set around the university, where this university which was Scream Three. No, it was Scream oh, Two, wasn't you're it? Right. On you're Scream right. On Scream Two, they she went to college and he followed her to college. Ah, okay, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. So this university, they're trying to prepare their students the best they can. They're, they're giving them the usual advice, you know, don't walk alone, be on alert, check your surroundings, lock your freaking door. And the university did give students the option of returning home with no repercussions, like, don't worry about your finals, just go home if you want. And yeah. <laughs> I'd run. The dorms were quiet and mostly vacated. 
nearly everyone was armed with pepper spray and guns. I know. Guns became a commodity, making them hard to find anywhere within 100 miles of town. I mean, people were free. They were scared. They were scared to death. And Gainesville became like a ghost town. Everyone's taking cover, hoping they wouldn't be the next victim because it felt really random. So like the movie, just hours after the murders, the news was all over the papers and the TV. So rumors are swirling from tales of like cannibalism to cults everything. It became a, like a media frenzy and even news trucks were dispatched from Japan. I mean, this is how big the story They couldn't became. have so, just called right. over and been like, what can I, you guys give yeah, me the details guys, before I go all weird? the way across the world? <laughs> to get detail. I know. So there's even That's Japanese weird. reporters there. Isn't it? Wow. So, On this small town. Yep. Yep. So the killer was dubbed, and you might have heard this before, the Gainesville Ripper. So the press, just like the movie, pestered students and even victims' families, just just like that freaking reporter in there. They were trying to be the station with the best coverage, so nobody could catch a break. Police and forensics teams are frantically working the sites. They know that the killer had cleaned up as much of the scenes of his killings prior to posing the bodies, which they thought was unique to him, that he would clean up and then pose it. Like he wasn't worried about time. And since no weapon was found at the scenes and no one had seen anything, they're left with pretty little to work with. They they just knew these girls were dead. And that was it, basically. So forensic scientists, though, they did get a clue from the second crime scene. Maybe not total clue but an indication of the degree of freaking depravity this killer is capable of i mean just de- beheading a person is pretty, <laughs> pretty that's pretty indicative. bad yeah, yeah. And cutting nipples off that's like oh, deep-seated shit isn't it yeah yeah it is so, so um many true crime bingers know about lividity so it's when the heart yes. stops pumping yeah and gravity forces blood to the lowest part of the body well, if a deceased person lies on their back long enough without being moved, the blood will become fixed there. And even if they're moved later, the blood remains in that area. It has completely pooled to, which is called maximum lividity. And that takes at least six hours to occur. And we know Krista's body was found sitting upright with her head on the bookshelf. That's that girl. Mm-hmm. Well, her blood had half had fixed lividity on her back, not down her legs and butt, like the sitting position. And this means she had laid there for at least half a day before being placed in the upright position. So this guy's not in oh. a hurry to leave. Yeah, he spent the day with her. He's not in a hurry to leave. He's not afraid of being caught. It's like he knows nobody's coming. He's going to eventually hit. Do you think he just, yeah. I mean, I guess we'll never know. But yeah. I wonder if he thought, I will, I, I'm not going to get caught, or if he thought, inevitably, I'm going to get caught, so I'm just going to be as gonna enjoy this as I want. Ugh. Yeah, I don't care. I'm not going to worry. YOLO. So YOLO. <laughs> I'll bet that was what was going through his mind. YOLO. So unlike the movie, local police didn't take on the task of finding the killer themselves. It wasn't just Dewey. It wasn't. There was a task force formed. To try to set I know, and that's what's funny about the Scream movie. Not that I'm really (laughs) believing it, like questioning Mm -hmm. the accuracy, but they really put Dewey up against some (laughs) messed up stuff. And he was like all alone. He had some dorky ass (laughs) deputy chick. Yeah. And it was was... like Barney Fife. It was like, what? (laughs) And in the movie Scream, everyone's getting off the principal of the school and the teachers (laughs) and the kids. And the parents, and then there's Dewey. It's just Dewey working the scene, oh, I'm working mad. the case. Yeah, so it wasn't like that at all. Thank God. Local, state, and national law enforcement descend on the area. So there's more than 150 police officers patrolling the streets. There are SWATs, canines, and a helicopter in constant surveillance. And there's all these wooded areas, like there was in Scream, around the city. So they're hoping with their massive presence that they'll dissuade the killer from doing this again. So uh, they thought maybe if they saturate the area, it 
the killer would turn and run or something, but it didn't work. There were no, more okay. than 150 officers and SWATs and canines and a helicopter. And they are constantly surveying the area, trying to, to dissuade the killer from killing again, thinking their presence is going to scare him off. But it doesn't yeah. work. Just three days after finding Krista's body, two more bodies are found. Two more bodies are found? Two more bodies. So Tracy oh, Paulus, I know, who lived with her friend and roommate, Manuel Taboda, both are just 23. They're found dead in their apartment on August 27th. So the pair had been friends since high school, shared a ground floor mm. apartment less than two miles from the first crime scene. So again, why were not they patrolling closer to the, I mean, seeing the, the pattern that these are all so close, like, right. You just think they would there. Patrol. Yes. Totally. I think they were, but it didn't scare this dude off or the they dude didn't, didn't notice care. him. Yeah. He was yellowing. Wow. He was yellowing. So similar mm. to Krista's apartment, the killer had entered by prying open the sliding glass door. So gotta the use creeper, the bar, you guys. Gotta use the freaking bar. I, it scares me to death. It so comes this, with the damn door. It just do it. And if not, if you're in an older home, use whatever, like a piece of wood. I don't care. Piece of wood. Uh, yeah. So this creeper, he finds Manuel asleep in his bedroom. He attacks Manuel, stabbing him. Manuel fought back. But he succumbed to the stabbing, eventually having been mm. stabbed 37 times. Because Manuel had fought back, Tracy heard the commotion. So she went down to Manuel's room and saw this attacker. So she goes running. She runs to her bedroom and barricades the door. But this killer's not leaving. He right. breaks through the door, tapes her mouth and wrists, cut off her clothing and raped her. Dang, so, I thought she was going to be okay. She woke up. She went downstairs. Oh, uh, it feels crap. just like those movies, though, where they're like, ah, uh, they get trapped somewhere, you know, and can't make their way out. Yeah. So like the others, he turns her face down and stabs her three times in the back. And then he went on to pose her body. But he didn't bother with Manuel. So he was all about the ladies. He liked to mess with them. Okay. So okay. investigators find this. They need to prove the killer's the same for all the cases. So they had collected thousands of items for evidence. Forced entry marks on each of the victim's doors revealed the same tool had been used in each. And mm -hmm. sticky residue from the duct tape used on the victims matched. And the removal of the victim's clothing had been cut off in the same pattern and motion. And well, and killer... also, I mean, in all the time this town has been around, right. there probably hasn't been murders where they're all exactly yeah. the same. I don't think you need right. to go far into doing like duct tape totally. glue. I know tests, <laughs> you know, but you got to cover the bases, I guess. They do, yeah. And I mean, it was within days of each other, but the killer had cleaned up each scene with the same detergent each time. So one investigator, I'm imagining Dewey now, he's once again leafing through the array of photos taken at each crime scene. And finally, he notices in one photo that there's a wadded up paper towel next to a kitchen sink. So he's really hoping they collected this and he's able to dig up that wad of paper towels that had been collected. Luckily, they collected masses of stuff. They collected everything and submitted okay. it for testing. They got a hit that it contained pure semen, meaning that it was uncontaminated. I know, gross, nasty. We don't want your semen, dude, but we need it yeah, so we can suck. get you. You're disgusting. So they began the test for DNA, but it would take weeks for the results to come back because this is the 90s. Meanwhile, the public is so paranoid that people are calling in every possible lead they can find to the police, like, like, it's got to be my weird neighbor. And police have to check out every one every of the... Everything. Oh, my God. And there were over 6,900 leads that roll in. So Because we all have up. that one family member who, you know, at Thanksgiving, <laughs> you're side-eyeing. Like, I think you, they got a dead hooker in the trunk. Well, totally. We all have that. You know? Yep. 
They yeah, we all, all in, have that. It's terrible. So all these If leads. you don't have if you don't have a dead hooker uncle at Christmas <laughs> sitting at the table, then is it really even mm-hmm. Christmas? Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have nobody to gossip about then and it's very boring. Yeah. Right. But all these leads begin gumming up the investigation. So it makes the work even more tedious and frustrating. So quickly, the focus did turn to a 19-year-old university student. He was reported as behaving erratically and talking incessantly about the murders. Plus, he had a violent history. So police are like, he's looking pretty good. We'll bring him in. As Mm -hmm. soon as they did, the killing seemed to stop. So they're like, sure, this has got to be our guy. Edward Humphrey is his name, and he had a history of mental illness, and his face was disfigured from an accident where he had jumped from a moving car during a mental break. So the scars help him fit into this, like, character of a monster mold that everyone would imagine would do this sort of thing, right? So he was scarred. Okay. Police were able to arrest Edward because he had just recently attacked his grandma. Oh, yeah, that takes a special kind of sicko. Who attacked Yeah, okay. Initial tests on semen found at the crime scene showed that whoever left it had been a, this sounds so gross, type B secretor. You know, Mm. secretor, the word alone is gross. Secretor's gross, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, It makes them really more rare because only 12% of the population has that type. I know I've looked into secretors before and it's like uh, they put out more of the the product. um, Yes. They put out more of the product? Kind of. It's it's more of this actual part of the product that I can't remember what it is. More cells, I think. Um, Oh my God. So it was a mega. Uh, I'm a mega secretor. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm a big Sorry. Secretor. I'm one of 12 percent. We shouldn't be laughing. This is a serious murder case. Right. Go ahead. Exactly. So because this was a type B secretor and it's rare, they find that Edward didn't have type B blood. So the that has to do with your blood type as well. So he was held in custody for five months. Ooh. Until a grand jury felt there's insufficient evidence to indict him. And if you remember in Scream, the police thought they had the real killer initially, but they didn't. They had arrested somebody for that. But oh, yeah. Cotton wet. Cotton. Yeah. Something. Oh, oh I you're am so on good. Fire. You are on fire. Oh, played by Liev Shriver. Oh, or no, Shriver. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Oh, I know. But, you know, I tried to learn Spanish when Murphy went to school couldn't do it, it nothing <laughs> it stuck stick. but this movie Had from the been. 90s i remember everything <laughs> maybe you need to watch all these in spanish and then you'd well, know it all. maybe that's yeah <laughs> <laughs> cotton. yeah yeah so is that spanish day, no i was saying cotton in like an accent cotton. <laughs> oh cotton, gotcha whatever. it's like wow that didn't suck. okay go ahead no. go ahead we got mm. off track off track all right so uh, on the day that Krista's body had been found, the girl that was sitting without her head, yeah, a bank in Gainesville was robbed at gunpoint. The day after oh the robbery, God, this town is this town. I know, is like and it was awful. It had been raided like the best in the U.S. Just you know, a month before, couldn't What's figure happening? it out. Okay, <laughs> a day the day after the robbery, a cop spotted this robber walking down a street in Gainesville. Like you match the description. He chases him into the woods surrounding the town. The robber, the robber lost him though, but the cop did happen upon a campsite. And there he goes through the campsite. He finds a bag with dye stained money. So they're like, yeah, that's, this is the robber's spot. Uh, The campsite had some key items that would lead to this robber's identity. So police collect a gun, screwdriver, a mask, duct tape, and a cassette tape recorder. So all this evidence is thrown into storage until police have time to look further into it. For now, they're searching for this killer dude, right? 
Yeah, because a bank robbery is down on the list. Okay. Yeah, they're like, this isn't a big deal. Let's put this in storage for a while. Yeah, but, Forget about it. Ke- Kelly, can I say if there's a murderer going around using duct tape and sharp mm-hmm. objects, and if you found a campsite of somebody who robbed a bank and they had duct tape and sharp yeah. stuff, don't you think it's kind of silly yeah. that they didn't look deeper into that? I like, know. wait a second. Could these be related somehow? But no, they didn't. So more than a year after the killing spree, in response to a nationwide request from the task force, they're asking for reports of similar crimes across the nation. Please get a call from Louisiana. So a year before the murders in Gainesville, 24-year-old Julie Grissom was raped and murdered in her apartment in Louisiana. Her eight-year-old nephew and dad were also killed, which horrifying, each with multiple stab wounds. Who kills a fucking kid? Psycho. Oh, that's awful. The scene had been cleaned up with detergent and the bodies had been displayed. The means of entry was similar to the other killings. So when you say detergent, do you mean, do you mean bleach? You know, they didn't or say detergent. It. I'm wondering if it was just a detergent because I don't think it really got rid of evidence that like bleach does. But who it's knows? Like, open up some Tide pods and rub it around. Yeah, <laughs> that is weird. <laughs> I know. OK, I was just I was just double bleach, checking. So I'm guessing that it's something else. So with the case okay. at a standstill, police decide to go back and take a look at other crimes that had been committed in Gainesville at the time surrounding the murders. So investigators go come across the crime scene of the robber's campsite. They come across evidence of that. So it's been a year and still nothing. The screwdriver found at the campsite, weird, it matched exactly those marks that were left by prying open the sliding glass doors at two of the Ripper's crime scenes. See? Uh Uh-huh. And the duct tape matched. So a strand of hair See? found in the camp. Uh-huh. You're right, Sadie. You should be a cop. So, so tired of solving of- crimes at my house. <laughs> it's exhausting. Uh, camp. Oh, you would have been great because they did find a strand of hair found in the campsite. And it had belonged to Krista Hoyt, one of the victims. Mm. A pair of pants that were recovered had traces of Manuel's blood. So this robber is oh, obviously yeah. the Gainesville Ripper. Oh, and remember how oh, they wow. found a cassette Tuber. tape recorder? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Remember how they found the cassette tape recorder at that campsite? <sighs> Police are in shocked the movie? When... No, oh, no, no, in, no. Sorry. In, the, in real life. At, yeah, 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 yeah. Campsite. Police are shocked when they listened to the tape that was inside of it, and the killer had recorded his voice and his full name like a dumbass. It was Brilliant. 36-year-old Daniel Harold Rowling. He had recorded his thoughts, songs, and messages for his family saying things like, this is not what I had wanted. What? But he YOLO'd Here's as a we song saw. I wrote about it. Yeah. <laughs> Psycho. So that would when- suck if you were the cop on duty of going through the tapes and he's like, I'm going to sing another song. It'd be like, oh. <laughs> Dude, please don't. Okay. This is why you are living in a campsite. You are not a good singer. <laughs> so when they yeah. go to search for Daniel Rowling, they didn't have to search far. He was already in jail. So the week after oh. the Gainesville murders, he'd been arrested for another robbery. Even with the evidence police had Danny, as he was known, not Daniel, what he wouldn't admit to the murders. Police had their ways of proving it was him, though. So they gathered DNA from him and he matched that collected. Remember how they collected all that secretor semen? (laughs) Yeah, the turbo secretor. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) So gross. Now I just, I envision a snail. A snail trail. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh. Just keeps getting worse. So he was responsible for five murders that they knew of at this point. After arresting Danny for the murders and the robbery, investigators set their sights on details of the cases. So one of the leads they'd gotten in earlier had actually been the right one. A Shreveport, Louisiana resident. Remember, we talked about Louisiana. Yeah. Cindy Jurisich 
had called in a tip to Crime Stoppers and reported that Danny Rawling may be responsible for murders in both Shreveport and Gainesville. Hello, she had called it in, like right after. I don't understand the how it happened. These, a lot of these cases that you talk about. It's mm -hmm. just like the people get away and get away and get away. And it's like yeah. and the man was found with a knife and blood all over. Yeah. But they had not enough to hold him. So they right. let him so go. So they've got to let him go. I know. It's got to be so frustrating. What? And I know a lot of times police say they know who it is, but uh, they just can't make a case for it yet. You know, so frustrating. I don't know but how anyway. with this case they can't make a case. But go right. ahead. No, they've got a case for it for sure. So Cindy, this lady that called in the tip, she had been driving through Florida on a trip and had heard about the Gainesville motor murders on the radio. So it flips a switch in her mind and made her immediately think about Danny, whom she had previously met at her church in Louisiana. So Danny had said some pretty creepy ass shit to Cindy and her husband. I mean, church. Come on. Dude's going to church. At church. Yeah, he told them, uh, he had told them that he likes to stick knives in people. At Hi, church? my name is he Danny. He told them that, I, yeah. Yeah, I like to Peace stick knives with in you. people. <laughs> Peace Bless. be with you. I like to <laughs> step. That is just, that's wrong. <laughs> yeah, he was so wanting to get caught. I mean, what else must he yeah, do for somebody gonna, to say, you're, it's, I'm, you're done? Yeah. Yolo. He's going to church and he's bragging about it. Yeah. A psycho. So her tip did help them look into him as a suspect. So when, when looking, I know that just killed me. Like, so what do you do? I like to stick knives in people. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm exactly. going to go home and get some jello. I don't know. So when looking into his past, they found that Danny was born in Shreveport to a police officer father who oh. continuously told him, though, that he was unwanted. Good oh. dad of the year. His Danny. father's brutally abusive. He even beat the family dog so badly that it died in Danny's arms. This is... Oh. So uh, Danny's seen some bad stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So dad, stellar dad of the year. As a teen, Danny was arrested several times for robberies in Georgia. And he was once caught for peeping in on a woman through a window getting dressed so Ooh. you know kind of starts starts little and then gets bigger as an adult he had trouble holding down a job and finding a path in society he had tried the military remember how he had that knife that was like mm. what they used oh. in hand-to-hand -hand combat yeah that was the but, knife oh mm. but he got kicked out of the military for drug position possession he got his shit together for a while, and he even married and had a daughter, but drove that wife away after repeating the abuse his own father had done to him, you know, abusing them. Right. It's a pattern. After, it is. It's horrible. After the divorce, his behavior just got worse. His voyeurism increased, and he raped a woman who looked like his ex. He also committed several armed robberies. I mean, this guy is going all out. He's in and out of jail through the 80s. And when he was out of jail, it was worse for women wherever he traveled. So he. And he they still like, haven't figured this dude out? No, it's crazy. He okay. even got into an argument, not an apartment. He even got into an argument with his father at one point, pulled out a gun and shot him in the stomach and head. But what? his dad survived dad survived he's lo what? lost the use of an eye and an ear but he's alive oh uh, i'd be pissed i oh. would be pissed yeah oh Although, my god but then again dad the dad is was an a-hole yeah. dad kind of yeah. okay too but all right then we leave the shooting uh, <laughs> you could have that one all of danny's female murder victims were petite caucasian brunettes with brown eyes like his mother so the prosecution at this point, they have all this evidence they need. And a month before his trial was to begin, Danny says, yeah, I want to talk to you guys. But yeah, in a bid to possibly pin everything on his cellmate, he wanted the cellmate to speak for him. This is the weirdest shit I've ever heard of. So they brought both the cellmate and Danny in for questioning. And the police would ask questions 
and Danny would whisper the answer to the smell cellmate who would then say it out loud to the cops. What? <laughs> Fortunately, the cellmate answered for him a few times and then asked out loud for all to hear, is that right, Danny? And Danny answered with yes. So this helped to prove that he was the one providing the confessions that he did, not the cellmate. It was like he was trying to make it look like cellmate was answering those. Isn't that ridiculous? So it's like he, so, okay. So he was probably thinking, well, this isn't a technical confession. This is just mm -hmm. me. It's like when OJ wrote that book, which was a confession, but he was Absolutely. like, you know, you can't do anything to me because he's doing it in a creative way. Right. That's but what he thought. He thought you're he saying so that smart. this, this yeah. would hold up in court. Okay. Yeah. So he said he was inspired by horror movies and specifically the exorcist which is bizarre which has that nothing a murder. to do with that. no he even gave himself a couple of personas one was yanad which is danny backwards <laughs> and he got what <laughs> he got the yanad? idea for that yanad he got the idea for that from the exorcist part three apparently that was part of it i didn't watch past the first one because I figured they all sucked. Because you just, it's no, it's yeah. silly. Yeah. His other person. How many times was... you got to play with the Ouija board? For God's sake, kid. <laughs> Stop it. So his other persona was Gemini, which was the name of the killer in the same movie in the Exorcist. Yeah. As for answers okay. for the murders and why he had come back to Krista's house after she'd been dead for some time to repose her. He said that he had realized after he killed her that his wallet was missing. So he had gone oh. back to retrieve it and have some fun with the dead body. So he, had he not gone back, he'd have been caught right away. He would have left his freaking wallet like an idiot. Oh, but instead he goes no. back what's and plays even, with her. Yeah, I mean, that's what? even more disturbing is that he realized, uh -huh. oh, I forgot my wallet. And then on the other hand, he was like, ah, eh, while I'm here. Might as well pose her in a few different like that is oh, just that's so wrong. It's so, so wrong. Sick. It is so sick. So Danny was able to evade capture right away by the lack of evidence he was leaving at the scenes. Oh my god. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. So instead of leaving duct tape on his victims, he knew enough to throw them in dumpsters all around so that prints wouldn't be found. Like he took them off of the victims. Um, mm. And he used the cleaning solvents to wash down the bodies to get rid of traces of semen. But in an oopsie moment, he left behind that one towel with his semen on it. So he had been wiping it off of them. And, and then, then left he left behind. the paper towel. Okay. Dumbass. Psych I know. <laughs> Psychiatrist examined Danny and diagnosed him with a severe personality disorder. What? But mm -hmm. that... But that he was fit for trial and he knew the severity of his crimes. So while behind bars awaiting trial, a writer, Sandra London, she collaborated with Danny to write a book on him called The Making of a Serial Killer, The True Story of the Gainesville Murders in the Killer's Own Words. But it gets sick. While working together, the two became romantically involved. <gasps> What a sicko. What a what is this I woman doing? I don't get it. I don't get it. Why people well as my mother would say, mm. her picker peckers off. That's oh. what my mom says when, when chicks keep going yes. dating losers. Her, her pecker, pecker picker? pickers off. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> That's just, this woman yeah. is like next level her pecker pickers off. Yeah, she knew every sick detail of this man's life and still she she gets into it with him they even get engaged but so their their relationship was the focus of errol morris's first person tv show so there's this whole episode about it it spotlighted their romance danny's artwork he'd started making while in jail and the supposed feelings of remorse he had for his crimes and it also showed a segment of Danny using one of the court hearings. This was sick. I watched this to display publicly his love for Sandra by serenading her with song in the courtroom. 
<sighs> so a whole courtroom's having to sit here and listen to him singing to her. How did and it's no like, one start? I mean, I know yeah, you're on a murder trial, it. but I think I would start laughing. <laughs> yeah, laugh. Absolutely. And Sing it, Danny. The, yeah. And shouldn't the judge be like, knock it off? No, we don't have time. These are taxpayer dollars. Yeah. We can't hear another song you wrote, no. Danny. They let him sing the whole freaking thing. So stupid. Ugh. So Danny was set to go to trial nearly four years after his murder spree. And shortly before... Before it began the trial, Danny pleaded guilty to all charges, so it went directly into the penalty phase instead of to a, a jury. On a trial. April, yeah. So on April twentieth of nineteen ninety four, Daniel Rowling was sentenced to death, and he was executed by lethal injection on October twenty fifth of two thousand six. So he has actually been Hooray! killed. Yeah, he deserved it. Also. Wait until you see photos of him because he really does look like the ghost face uh, mask. mask. Like he's got his these face kind looks of, like the mask. It does. He's got these kind of droopy eyes that look so sad and droopy mouth. Wait until you see. It just weirded me out. I, I will. That's, yeah. Yeah. You got to. This put it will on take there. a little bit of time with my technological knowledge, but I will do a side by side on the video. If you were watching, um, mm. you can see because I'm fascinated to see what this guy looks like. I think they did make that mask after him because he does resemble it quite a bit. Just the expression on his face and how his face is made. Yeah, it's it's weird. So that is the story of the Gainesville Ripper and Scream for October. Oh, wow. Oh, horror Sorry. month. Horror month. Murder yeah. month. Anytime Kelly's on, it's horror because it's Murder <laughs> Monday. Wow. This is a big it, one. It, mm. This is a big one. Uh, I don't even know how to end <laughs> You've it. You've got a process. I'm still thinking about the nipple thing. Oh. oh. And what did he do with them? I don't know if they were at the campsite. No, they didn't mention finding them. Where did he put them? Ugh. Oh, Lordy. Thank you so much for listening on that uplifting note to today's Murder Monday, which you should you should understand on Mondays. We're probably going to usually end on a low note. Yeah, uh, but it's thank not exactly you. happy. Yes. Thank you, Kelly. And Kelly has her own podcast and you should definitely subscribe to it. It's called ODFM1D for Murder and it's on all platforms. And this is what Kelly does. She does like a deep dive of research on these cases. And then she's kind enough to every Monday, come on to my yeah. podcast and, and tell one of these insane stories. And Oh, how many people would have been brain? Oof. How, ma how many people, how many been people, what? how many people would have been saved? If, uh, if oh, they just it makes me really the sad. immediately. Yeah. Yep. And Gross. you know what it also, I mean, it obviously makes you think of Scream the movie. It also makes me think of these Idaho murders because those oh. were just next level messed up in the same age group. I Absolutely. mean, uh, horrible. Just, just disgusting. Yeah. And I'm, I'm thinking he probably had more victims down in Louisiana where he had spent quite a bit of time to this Gainesville Ripper. So probably a lot down there mm. that are unsolved. They don't realize that it's him. All right. Well, All right. Kelly, well, thank, thank you, you for, for having me today. Yeah. Thank you again, for having uh, me. Go, again, go check out her podcast. It's called ODFM and it's just murder all the time. We'll see you next Monday, Kelly. <laughs> Sounds good. Take care. Bye, friend. <laughs> we did it. Oh.